one of the easiest way to run stable diffusion excel sd excel model on free google collab is to use something called focus i mean focus focus whatever it is so you can go ahead and then create a simple image using a prompt like this and you can select different styles and it is so amazing to see how the latent space progresses and you can ultimately see the image and in this tutorial we're going to see how you can use focus Focus is an open source project where you can go ahead and see the code. It's a, it's with GPL 3.0 license. The idea here is that you want a very simple GUI, G, graphical user interface to use Stable Diffusion Excel, SD Excel. And the, what Focus does is uh, it tries to get the philosophies and principles behind Midjourney. So it wants to learn from Stable Diffusion, like the software that is offline, open source and free. And it also wants to learn from Midjourney where, you know, users just have to simply give a prompt, like they don't have to think a lot about it. If you are on Windows, it's very easy for you to download Focus and then run it. All you have to do is run it and then run run.bat and you should be fine. I don't have Windows to test it. So on Mac, I cannot use it right now. They don't have a software for Mac. So all they need is four gigabytes of NVIDIA GPU memory v, uh, VRAM and eight GB of system memory, the computer RAM. So if you have this thing, then you can run this. If you have got like an older GPU version, like 2090 RTX 2090, you could still do it. But if you don't have it, like me, don't worry, you can use it in free version of Google Collab. Free version of Google Collab comes with 15 GB of memory um, and you can definitely easily use it. So I'm going to show you starting with that, we are going to use a GPU called T4 GPU. That's what by default we get it on the free Google Collab. And as you can see the code, it installs a bunch of packages and then it starts downloading the models and then finally it runs the Gradio application in itself. Um, the notebook is available. You can just click it and then open it and then you can just give run all. And once you give run all, it is going to do starting from cloning the repository, installing all the libraries and then downloading the models and ultimately running the Gradio application. It would take a couple of minutes depending upon um, the computer machine that you have got. And also if you are doing it on local, like if you have got Linux, you can do the same thing on your local machine. But overall, it will take a couple of minutes and after the couple of minutes, you will get a Gradio link that you can click and then start playing with the GUI, the graphical user interface. At this point, almost all the models are downloaded and the inference engine has been kicked off. Like you can see inference engine is cloned and you've got the local URL and you've got the Gradio URL. You can see the GPU memory is still not at maximum and you would see the GPU memory starting to shoot up once we start using image generation. At this point, it is like quite low at the bare minimum. So once you go to the Gradio link, the link that you would get here, once you go to the Gradio link, you can go see a bunch of options. It's a very simple interface. You can click just the prompt and then you can give the prompt. But if you want like advanced options, you can click advanced the check mark and then it would give you three tabs. One is for setting, the second one is for style and the third one is for advanced. The good thing with the style is it gives you a lot of different options. And in advanced, you can go ahead and then see if you want to add multiple LoRa's. All these LoRa files that the safe tensor file that you have got, you should put it inside the respective models folder. But here you can select that and then you can start using with that. And if you don't want an advanced option, all you want is like a very simple interface. You can go ahead, give the prompt. Like for example, in this case, Lego minifigure of Spider-Man. That's all I had to give. And uh, if you go there and watch the Google Collab notebook, you will start seeing the GPU RAM, the VRAM starting to shoot up. It would hit almost like 14.5 gigabytes. And that is exactly why after a few iterations of generating the picture, you might have to restart your runtime, which I will show it at the end of the video, how to do it. But at this point, you can see that it started to generate the image. And while it has started to generate the image, it will also um, shoot up the RAM, like it's going to occupy more and more RAM. By default, uh, the focus interface uh, generates two pictures, two images. So it means two iterations of image generation, stable diffusion image generation is going to happen. So you have to wait for both the images to run. But if you go to the UI, you can see the latent space, like how is it progressing? But if you're on the collab, you can see how much the memory is being captured and also what kind of errors or warnings that shows up. So if you want to improve the code by yourself, you can do it. Like as you can see now, it started to generate the image and once it completes the generation, you can go to the interface and then see the picture that you have just generated. I am absolutely in love with Stable Diffusion Excel. You can see the quality of the image and it's a very simple prompt. I just said Lego minifigure of Spider-Man because there was a different LoRa that would help you generate Lego figures, minifigures. 
and even without using that particular LoRa by default, like using default settings, it does a quite an amazing job. And you can even further go ahead and then optimize this for either speed or quality, or you can change different styles. You've got a lot of style options and by default, cinematic default is selected, but you can go and select analog films. This is something that I used to like. If you want anime style, you can select anime style. If you want like, like futuristic, you can select futuristic style and all these styles are available as a, just a simple radio button. All you have to do is click it and then give a prompt. Like in this case, I've said like a beautiful portrait of a young kid. Even I've made a mistake when I spelled beautiful. And you can also see the GPU RAM again, you know, being flatline near 14.5 gigabytes. That's exactly why after some point you will start getting CUDA out of memory error. But once this finishes, you can see how beautiful the picture gets generated. Absolutely amazing. This is an anime picture of a beautiful portrait of a young kid. And it's a very simple prompt. And this used to happen only with mid journey. All you have to do was simple prompts. And let's try to use the same prompt with a different style. Like in this case, we can use a, a retro game, retro arcade style. And if we generate it again in a couple of seconds, we're going to see a picture and you would be actually surprised and impressed to see how good job, uh, how really best job SDXL does it. And that's why this model is really one of the king of uh, the existing open source diffusion models that can generate images. Our image is almost going to get generated. And as you can see that this is a really good picture. I mean, this is almost like if you're going to generate uh, an 8-bit uh, eight bit graphics or uh, like a game, you can literally use this, expand the image, right click it, and then you can save the image and you can play with that. Like you can do whatever you want. And uh, this is quite amazing. The fact that this entire GUI is free and that the model is free, all you have to do is you can use it. And like I said, like we always hit this memory issue. So when you hit the memory issue code out of memory, all you have to do is go restart the runtime. When you restart the runtime, it's not going to delete the files that you have loaded. So you have already loaded this model files. You have got all these files available. If you have got LoRa, it is not going to delete those. Rather, it would delete the local variables. Click runtime and restart runtime. Do is go inside the folder just pull git pull and then you can start running the python file which is this will run the model and launch the inference engine again and that means you can start using the gui the graphical user interface of focus just within the gradio link i mean this is all fine only thing that you have to remember is when you use google collab notebook everything is persistent only for that session so which means if you restart the session you have to restart and use everything again and you've got the new link again and uh, thanks to focus this is quite an amazing thing. Like it's very easy for you to use it. All you have to do is a click. Even if you have not got a GPU, it does the heavy lifting. It's based on auto 11.11. That's what the developer is saying. Like they've taken the code from that also. So they've credited that. And all you have to do is now run it once again, put all the models that you want in the models folder, um, the LoRa folder and whatever the extensions that you want to use and click the link. You will be greeted with the new GUI graphical user interface and go type the prompt and enjoy SDXL.